You've had quite the week. How are you? All right, then, Moody. You know what they say, if you can't do the time, don't... Well, don't do... Don't do this to those, if you catch my drift. Um, I think... I understand how Caroline Flack felt. Now, I know what some of you are probably thinking. You're thinking, Danny, get off the bandwagon, get off your soapbox, stop being so judgmental, innocent until proven guilty, all of that stuff, yada, yada, yada. And I hear you, but um, what about mob rule? Let's give trial by the media a try. Isn't it kind of ironic how trial by the media gets such a negative press? Look, all I'm saying is I can see bullshit a mile off, okay? I've been weaseling out of things my entire life. And I spot a weasel. <sighs> and its tracks are fresh. I think I know how Caroline Black felt. You penis. I see you. You think I don't see you, Philip Schofield, but I see you. Been practicing that line all night. Do you know that other presenter who topped herself? That's how I feel now. I'm such a victim. Last week, if my daughters hadn't been there, then I wouldn't be here. Okay, so just a bit of background for anyone who's watching from outside the UK who, who doesn't know who this guy is. This is a very famous TV presenter in the UK, Philip Schofield. He's been famous since the 1980s. Um, and he lived his entire life as a heterosexual man. He was married and now has, he has two grown-up daughters. And about two or three years ago now, uh, he came out as gay on TV. And uh, it was very strange. I mean, there were always rumours because... He was quite effeminate, and um, a lot of people accused him of being a closet homosexual his entire life. Uh, he decided to come out a couple of years ago and um, presented it to the media, to the world, as, well, I just had to get it off my chest, I've been living a lie. But that started the rumours about why he decided to come out. Uh, was there some kind of scandal? Was he worried that something would happen, a little bit like Kevin Spacey? And... Um, well, in the last few weeks, it's really snowballed. Uh, he's had to resign from his uh, job on ITV in the UK because there is a scandal involving a young member of the crew there. And photos started circulating all over the internet of him uh, having a relationship. And I don't mean necessarily a physical relationship, but that he knew this boy for a long time before he was uh, over the age of consent. And then their relationship, as far as we can tell, as far as we know, began after he was over the age of consent. But it was an affair. I mean, at worst, uh, at worst, it, this is something really, really, really bad. At best, uh, it's very, very weird. It's some older man uh, exerting his power and influence over a younger person trying to make their way in show business. It's all very creepy, it's all very weird, and that's it. Let's just see how he defends himself, because what he's being accused of is very, very serious, and obviously it's, it's, it's not something to be made light of. However, I'm a disgusting human being, and I'm gonna do that. <laughs> and they've guarded me. Um. And won't let me out of their sight. It's like a weird numbness. I know that's a selfish point of view. But you come to a point where you just think, how much are you supposed to take? I think you're going to see as the interview goes on, he comes across as very much trying to cover his tracks. He comes across as quite narcissistic, making excuses for himself, almost sort of pretending as though this is very candid and very spur of the moment, but he's too quick to answer the questions. You're going to see stuff like that. And to me, I don't know, maybe some people are just like that and they come across as false when they're being genuine. I... <laughs> I don't know. Uh, it, it doesn't look good to me. If 
all of those people that write all of that stuff, do they ever think that there's actually a person at the other end? And so, here I am, um, Yeah. Are you feeling okay to do this? Are you feeling strong enough to do this interview? Yeah, I have to. I think it's interesting to see how the media, the mainstream media, right, the shape-shifting lizards... Very good, parents! ...are treating uh, Mr Skirfield here, right? Because, uh, remember this, this is BBC doing the interview, right? But ITV, he resigned from ITV amidst the scandal, right? And all of his co-hosts now are coming out saying, oh, I didn't know, or they're saying, oh, he's always been a bastard. I just didn't dare say anything because he was too big. It was too hot to handle, that was. So Philip Schofield admits he lies. ITV lie. The place is a den of iniquity. Mm. This is the same company that uh, threw Jeremy Clarkson and Piers Morgan under the bus when they dared to criticise Meghan Markle. Jeremy Clarkson was the host of Who Wants to Be a Millionaire and got sacked for saying that he wanted to see people throwing feces at Meghan Markle in that article. <clears throat> Piers Morgan called Meghan out for being a bullshitter and those two were sacked immediately. This guy is accused of nonsery <laughs> and, uh, and he gets a weepy interview on the BBC. You know, it's, uh, it's bloody amazing, the double standards, right? It really is. Why? Why do you want to do this interview? Because there is an innocent person here who didn't do anything wrong. The first time I saw that, I thought he was referring to himself in the third person, but he's not. Uh, who is vulnerable and probably feels like I do. And I just have to say, stop with him. Uh, okay with me. But stop with him. Leave him alone now. That's the fakest shit I've ever seen. Do you remember? Caroline Flack. That's how I feel. Comfort me. It's fine. I can take it. It's the other guy I feel sorry for. You wouldn't want anything to happen to him. I can take it. Remember Caroline Flack? Yeah. How concerned are you about his welfare right now? Massively. Massively. When did you first meet this young man in question? What were the circumstances? I was invited by a friend of mine to go to open a drama school and that's where the picture was taken. Um, whether it was immediately or sometime after, he said, will you, um, will you follow him on Twitter because he's a, he's a fan? So I said, yeah, sure, no problem. That's a bit weird, a teenager who's a massive fan of Philip Schofield. It could be true, I guess. It's so odd how he describes everything, though. He asked me to follow him on Twitter. Because he was a massive fan. A massive fan of Philip Schofield. I said, sure, yeah, no biggie. I can give him a little follow. A little follow all the way to his bedroom. No, no, no. He didn't say that. Which I did. And he was, what, 15 at the time? Yeah. Well done there, Philip Schofield, I have to say. He got through that very quickly. Just quickly paper over that question and move on. Right? He was how old? 15? Yeah. No need to linger on that question. Yep, yeah, that's that's right. Yep, yeah, next. And this is over. A but I follow, I follow eleven thousand three hundred people, and in all the time I've been on Twitter, there has never been any whiff of impropriety. If no one died. Oh yeah, nothing weird about that at all, Phil. I follow eleven thousand three hundred young boys. I mean, people on their way home from school. I mean, on Twitter. No one died. See, this is the thing, isn't it, with the bloody uh, sensationalist gossip bitches, right? They, they don't think of all the 11,299 people. He didn't try to bugger. How often were you in touch with him? Hardly, uh, hardly at all. He then said that he was interested in television. OK, well, you know, good luck, good luck. Anything I can do to help, probably. That's what I normally say. Anything I can do to help? A boy in the bush is worth two in the hand. Um, and that was it for a while. And then he asked if he could visit the studios, work experience type of thing. I wonder if it's too late for me to get my foot in the door like that. 
you know, just it'd only be like a short term thing until I was like established. Yeah. Oh, look at those crow's feet. Who are you kidding, Danny? You're past your prime. Schofield wouldn't look twice at you. I said, well, you'd come down and have a look for sure, which he did. Oh, I see how it is. Just like that, eh? That's how easy it is to get a foot on the ladder at ITV, you know? And here's me, still waiting for Dan Wharton to call me back from GB News. How old was he when he first said to you, I'm interested in television? Was he 18 by that point? Nine, 19 then, I would think. 19? <laughs> Pathetic. I don't know, I guess whatever uh, floats your boat. 19 by then. When you look back now, if you were to look back at those messages now, is there any sense in which you were flirting with him? No. How long do we reckon it is before uh, Philip throws the other guy under the bus? It was all his idea, the dirty little slut. I'm, I, I, I've been 41 years in television. You know, no, nothing like this before. You know, no, no accusations. No one died. When you met him in person, was there a little moment of sexual attraction then even? Absolutely not. Mm, I think the shoe was rather on the other foot. I'm Philip Schofield. As in, there goes Philip Schofield heading into Soho. It's Friday afternoon, he's a bit tipsy. Mothers, lock up your sons. Not because, I mean, who remembers Caroline Flack? How old? was this young man when you first had any kind of sexual contact with him? 20. Okay, so here we get into the, uh, into the nitty gritty of the case, right? What do we actually know? What do we actually know? What was the extent of their relationship before this young man was over the age of consent? Did Philip Schofield uh, encourage him into a physical relationship before he was over the age of consent? Things like that. We we don't know. So we I think we have to be we have to handle it with care a little bit. I know I've been joking the whole way through the video, but we don't know. Another element to this story, which is very weird though, and I know it's not exactly related, but it's very odd, is that in April of this year, Philip Schofield's brother Timothy went to prison for having a relationship with an underage boy. He's in prison now for that. And Philip Schofield knew about it and did not inform the police. I know that doesn't mean he's guilty of what he's being accused now, but it doesn't look good. And the only other thing I've got to base my feelings about this on are his answers in this interview, really. He seems shifty. He seems like he's desperately trying to sound candid and spontaneous in, in this interview and the answers seem pretty pretty well prepared. He seems like he's acting. And from a lot of people, what they're saying about Philip Schofield is he is quite narcissistic. He is quite an actor. Um, I don't know. It, it doesn't look good to me. Let me ask you, Derek, did you have any kind of sexual relationship or sex with him when he was underage? No, God, no. That I think that is, a, you know, and in my statement, it, it says, you know, consensual relationship, fully legal. I mean, that was approved by both sides. <laughs> no. Okay, I don't know. Look, we don't know. I don't want to. I re I don't want. I mean, imagine it, he's done nothing wrong, and he's been accused of this, and it's devastating. That answer still sounded a bit weird to me. God, no, no, absolutely not. And actually, if you check the statement, which we both agreed on, uh, we both said it was consensual and uh, there was nothing illegal. Uh, and we both agreed, so. You know, that's, no, no. He'd been working at the show for a few months. Um, and, and we become mates. We were mates. Um, you and he were buddies, weren't you? You know, we around the studios, you hang out together, you know, you chat to each other, that sort of stuff. No one died. And then, in my dressing room one day, something happened. Someone died. Which, you know, obviously I will regret forever, for him and for me, mostly him. Uh, what did you do to him? That happened maybe four or five times over the next few months. 
And I know it's unforgivable. Uh, he looks like he's reminiscing. Hope he's not reminiscing. Um, but we weren't boyfriends. We weren't in a relationship. I was really in a mess with my own sexuality at the time. I'm going to get battered in the comments again. How many of us feel battered? Probably, but here goes. I, I don't care. <laughs> um, I don't have a lot of sympathy for people in their 60s struggling with their sexuality. Work it out in your 20s. Or earlier, if possible. <laughs> I, don't, I don't know. I, I guess you got married young, maybe back in the 80s. There so was more stigma around it, around being gay. To me, it kind of feels like a bit of narcissism. It's like he's got this public persona and being gay didn't fit in with that. The being a married man with kids did. And, um, I don't know, hiding that for so many decades from your wife. Is that really because you're scared? Or is it just you don't give a shit about other people? It just seems a bit narcissistic to me. I, I don't know. I... Uh... People are complicated. People's lives are complicated. I, I don't know. I don't know. It just happened. How old was he at this stage? 20, 21. The, the answers, they seem too sheepish. It, I, it feels like he's performing. I can't put my finger on it. And I'm not accusing because I don't know. I, again, this is complicated, but... Um, he's, he's sort of all devastated one second, like, oh, it just, it just happened. And then it's like, how old was he at that stage? 20, 21? No, no biggie. I don't know. That just seems a little bit, it's just a bit off. I don't know. And did you ever tell Holly Willoughby? No, God, no. Use not God's name in vain, you sodomite. <laughs> I'm kidding. I'm joking. Though I do get comments like that under my videos from time to time. Our makeup room was like a sanctuary. A sanctuary? More like a harem. Holly did not know. Nobody knew. And you never you never told her? No, I didn't tell anybody. I mean the reason this matters is because it is about potential abuse of power. I and know it that. is I understand that. And I, and that is a very, very valid question to put to me. Mm, I don't know. Maybe I've watched too many criminal interrogations on YouTube and I now think I'm a, a behaviour expert, uh, a psychologist, a criminologist. I do think that. But, but I'll say this, that reaction of relief at accepting the minor charges, right? You're accused of one thing that's horrible and then the journalist says, well, some people would say that's an abuse of power. And, go, and his reaction is to go, oh, yeah, 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 that's fair enough. Uh, yeah, that's, that's disgusting too. So you should be trying to get rid of both accusations. It is true, though, of course, if they're accusing you of one thing that's way worse than the other, you're kind of, okay, <laughs> just so long as you don't believe that. I don't know. What's going on in his mind there? I guess you are thinking one of them, a long time in prison. The other one, nah, a slap on the wrist. So there would be relief there whether it's true or not. I don't know. I'm, 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 I'm thinking about this too much. I'm trying to get inside Scoff's head. And people would say the circumstances are as follows here. You met someone who was a child. You were in a position of power over them. You used your power eventually to give them something they craved, which was a, shot at a job in the media. You nurtured a relationship and then that relationship became sexual. And they might ask, what's the difference between that and grooming? Well, I would say that the initial list of things was not, not right anyway. Tell me, why? Because it was a totally innocent picture, a totally innocent Twitter follow, of which I follow 11,400 people. Oh, 11,400 is it now, Philip? Uh, the, the plot thickens. Uh, whatever. <laughs> I guess that's not important. You know if he has signed an NDA, a, a non-disclosure agreement, preventing him from speaking? No. You don't know no, if he, he has? Is. No. Did I make him sign an NDA? No, absolutely not. But there's a question of whether or not he was, as it were, paid off. And no. In effect, if he was paid off, no. was he paid for his silence? No. God, no. No. So no. is he free to speak if he wants to? Yeah. Yes. I mean, what he wants is for all of this 
to go away. In fact, that's exactly what I said to him. I said that what you want is for all of this to go away. You want all of this to be swept under the carpet before we sweep you into a shallow... Yeah, he's free to say what he likes. Why is all this coming out now, Philip? What was the catalyst? What changed? It got too big. Come on, you can do better than that. No. It got too big for both of us. It just got enormous. I'm not gonna make a penis joke. It was growing and growing and growing. Is this the tip of the iceberg? Are there more allegations and revelations to come, or, or as far as you're concerned, is it's it all biggest, out? It's it was all my out biggest, there. sorriest secret. When did you last speak to Holly Willoughby? Uh, I um, WhatsApped her on the day that I put the statement up, and I said to her, I know you can't reply, you're probably not allowed to, but please know that I am so desperately, desperately sorry. Well, this may not be the tip of the iceberg for uh, Philip's revelations, but uh, I fear it may be the tip of the iceberg for funny content, right? Because uh, Eamon Holmes' interview about him was pretty good. Ooh, 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 ooh. I'm gay. I'm gay. I thought he killed a child or something. So I want to take a closer look at that. <laughs> Uh, all right, like, share, subscribe, all the rest of that stuff that helps the algorithm. I'll see you in the next one. Goodbye.